this module, we are going to give you an introduction into health promotion so you have a good idea of what it is to set the tone for the rest of the semester. So, so far in your degree, as a BPK student, you have learned a lot about how the body is structured, how it functions, and how it moves. And you've also probably have a decent understanding of what things are good for the body and what things are not so good for the body. Okay? None of that is what this class is about. Because after learning all of that, there's still a question that remains. Knowing how my body works and what's good for my body, how does that actually make a difference in other people's lives? How do I actually help people to do things that are better for them, like not drinking so much, or moving more, or eating kind of a healthier diet? How do I get other people to make differences in their lives and to be healthier? How do I help families feel more connected and improve their social well-being and mental well-being? How do I help families be active and to be healthy? And how do I help more at a higher level? How do I help change some things that are happening in countries that make them, let's say, less healthy? So for instance, in this slide, it looks at uh, physical inactivity. And the darker you see certain countries, that means that there's higher levels of physical inactivity. A health promoter is going to ask themselves, how do I make a difference at the country level? Or at the individual level? Or at the community level? How do I make a difference? And that's something that I would really encourage you to think about this semester, is where is probably going to be your area of intervention of promoting health? And there's lots of different ways to do that, but you're probably more set up to promote health in one way compared to others. For instance, I don't work one-on-one -on -one with people. I try to promote health through knowledge translation, and I do that more at the community level. But for you, maybe you want to work in public policy. Maybe you want to work one-on-one -on -one people. So think about where you want to make a difference, because that's going to affect how you are going to be a health promoter in your life. Okay, so what is health promotion? <laughs> Good question. So health promotion is a process. It's a process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health. The main message here is by being a health promoter, I make it easier for other people to make good decisions and to take control of their own health. I am not forcing them to be healthy, I'm helping them be healthy by themselves, okay, or within their community, or again, within, at the national level, okay? And I like this last concept here, that health promotion is not just the responsibility of the health sector, okay? So like, again, politicians make a difference in health, urban planners make a difference in health, people that run uh, schools and hospitals and gyms, all of these th people make a difference in health advertisers. There's so many different areas where you can be a health promoter. Just because we keep using the term health, what does the term health mean? Health is the complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being. So with health promotion, you might want to focus on one of those areas, physical, mental, or social well-being, or maybe you try looking at interventions that do all three. You know, that would be kind of the trifecta of health promotion is helping people increase control over their physical, mental, and social well-being. So they can do it even when you're not around. That's a good health promoter. So although with health promotion, we might lead to a reduction in disease rates at a population, that's not really the main goal of health promotion. It's not just about people not getting lung cancer, for instance or obesity, for instance, another disease. So let's look at the example of lung cancer. So lung cancer, of course I don't want people to get it, but also I want them not to smoke just so they are also healthier right now. So it's not just about preventing something, but it's about the, the moment. It's about well-being in the now and not just stopping something from happening, okay? So of course health promotion efforts make a difference in disease, but that's not really the main focus of health promotion, okay? Although public health might look more at that or population health might look more at that, okay? We often talk about health promotion as being upstream, but some people argue that it can also be downstream. 
So upstream means that we are doing interventions before that negative behavior even starts. So for instance, if we're again using the example of smoking, an upstream intervention could be to like eliminate all the cigarettes in an entire country. <laughs> of course, that's not going to happen, but it'd be very effective, right? Stopping it before it even started. Okay. Another example of an upstream intervention with smoking is making cigarettes really expensive. Okay. Or limiting where people can actually smoke. Okay. Limiting where you can smoke. That might be a bit more downstream. A downstream intervention would be more like, okay, well, people already smoke. How do I get them to quit? Or how do I lessen the harm that that cigarette smoke does? Okay. So you could argue that all of those kind of areas are all health promotion. Although typically when we talk about health promotion, we're talking more about these proximal upstream interventions that kind of stop that negative behavior before it starts or makes it harder or, or starts that positive behavior um, from the get-go. So I mentioned the terms public health and population health, and I think it's worth just differentiating between these two. Um, and they're often used interchangeably. And quite honestly, I'm not going to test about the difference between these two terms because I struggle with the difference myself. Um, and like I said, they're often used interchangeably. Population health, though, typically deals with looking at a population and the determinants of health within a population, monitoring that population for what is affecting its health in a positive way or negative way, and then maybe thinking about how to intervene. Public health is more about like what can we as a society do to improve the health of our society. Usually we're talking about policies here. Usually we're talking like the Public Health Agency of Canada is concerned with like national issues of health. Okay. However, both public health and population health often use health promotion tactics or the concept of health promotion. Okay. So health promotion is really about making a difference making a difference in people's lives by helping them make a difference in their own lives. Okay. So that's a bit of the difference between those terms. So to kind of end this first uh, section of the first module, I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about why health promotion is super frustrating <laughs> though. It is because health promotion is frustrating because it takes time. It takes a lot of time. And sometimes you have to fight for a difference, especially if you want to make like big changes at like the public level, at the country level. This takes time. You kind of have to fight for it. You got to know the right people. And typically you need political investment too. Okay. So a really good example of things that have taken a long time and that are still being fought for are the civil rights movement in the United States, right? Or what we used to call the civil rights movement, which, which was some still called that in a lot of circles. The civil rights movement, we often talk about it with, with respect to, to black people in wanting the right to vote, deserving the right to vote and fighting for the right to vote. Okay, well, they got the right to vote, but that doesn't mean like everything's cool <laughs> within that society. You know, there are still other matters that they are still fighting for just to be treated equally, just to be treated fairly, just to not be like the recipients of systemic racism. Okay, so these are things that people are still fighting for that really do need political investment, political capital for people to be interested in it as well for it to make a difference. Okay? And it can be really frustrated when you're fighting for a cause and you don't see a difference right away. But little things do make a difference over time. Okay, shoulders of giants is what we all stand on. Another example of a movement that is still going on that people are still fighting for and still fighting for kind of basic human rights, which of course affects their health as well, <laughs> definitely affects mental, physical, and spiritual and social well-being too, is Indigenous rights. And this isn't just a fight that's going on in Canada. This is one that's been happening around the world, right, where people that are Indigenous to lands who have been displaced and who their land has been in a lot of cases taken from them, they're fighting for, to keep their culture, to keep their traditions, to not be persecuted, to be treated fairly, to have the same advantages that, that they had or that other people have as well. And again, these things all affect their health too. So you could argue that, that these two things are not really health promotion, they're more like social causes 
but absolutely health promotion is locked into these two because by helping people to have equal rights, right? We're also helping them increase their ability to take control of their own lives and their own health too. Okay. So like I said, there's lots of way to be health promoters, but I got to tell you that the higher level, the more of a difference you want to make, the more time it takes and the more you need kind of the right people on your side too. And sometimes the more you have to fight for it. So some things to keep in mind as we start this course. We'll see you in the next module when we talk about a really important document called the Ottawa Charter, which was really foundational to this whole concept of health promotion.